Hello? Hello? <clears throat> Podcast Network Asia. Network Asia. This episode may include topics, references, or discussions around sexual assault, domestic violence, stalking, physical violence, or subject matters that may be disturbing to some of our listeners. We do acknowledge that this content may be difficult. We also encourage you to care for your safety and well-being. Shocking, sad, revealing, and deeply researched, PH Murder Stories podcast covers the true account of infamous killings and true crime stories from the Philippines. There's no such thing as questions, just hidden answers. Stay tuned as we revisit the inconceivable crimes that exist. Some listeners may find the following content of PH Murder Stories highly disturbing due to its graphic nature. PH Murder Stories does not condone nor promote violence of all sorts. Viewer discretion is advised. Elvira Manahan was a society and fashion icon in the Philippines, whose reputation remains unrivaled to this day. All that came to an end the day she was murdered on October 14, 1986, leaving behind a legacy of glamour and mystery. Every generation has had its own share of it girls. These icons were trendsetters when it came to fashion and lifestyle, and everyone who's anyone wanted to be like them, or even have just a whiff of their aura. Their legacies stood the test of time, They would eventually be known for years, even decades beyond their lifetime. During the 1950s in the Philippines, one such it girl was Elvira Manahan. Her show-stopping moments and fashionable stunts could rival Bianca Jagger. She was a fashion icon whose eccentricity, laughter, and unpredictability made her well-known in everyone she encountered. According to Nestor Torre, director and co-host of Elvira on the late-night TV talk show, Two for the Road, with her, an ordinary day turned out to be special, an adventure in the Philippine social landscape no one has or would ever come close to being as fascinating a subject as her. She had it or in Filipino, may dating. There was just something about her that drew anyone in. She was a combination of elegant and wacky. When women were expected to be prim and proper, Elvira's vivaciousness attracted the attention of younger people, and various men gravitated towards her, even while she was married. She aged gracefully and never let her age get the best of her when it came to living her life. She dared to be different. Elvira Ledesma, her name before she got married, grew up in Silay City in the province of Negros Occidental. She was said to have come from a modest family through her well-to-do grandmother who raised her. There were stories that Elvira was already wacky in her childhood Probably taking after her grandmother, in her teenage years, she became the toast of the town for her beauty. Although she had many admirers, Armando Eduque was the one for her. In Armando's heartfelt letter to Elvira, dated April 29, 1944, he wrote about how much he missed her while on a visit to his family's farm. He wrote, I left Manila but you were branded on my memory, eating deeper and deeper into it. With every minute and mile that took you further and further away from me, I could see you in the windshield of the car, in the heat waves that shimmered along the road. On the tops of the suitcases beside me, I could see you everywhere. 
Elvira fell in love with Armando and married him while she was in her late teens. Unfortunately, during that time, the Philippines was being captured by Japanese forces during World War II. Armando Eduque died not long after, under circumstances that left his young widow to be miserable. In 1945, the Japanese invaders poured gasoline on the Eduque residence and set it on fire. The Edukes fled to an air raid shelter in the nearby Madrigal compound. Later on, they returned to their home and made a dugout in their yard, where they hid for a couple of days. However, their pet, German Shepherd, kept barking, and Eduke was afraid that it would call the Japanese soldier's attention to them. He decided to take the dog away. Elvira recalled that a lot of shooting followed. The Americans arrived not long after, but Eduke never returned. A few days later, she found him dead on the street. She tried to remove his wedding ring, but the flesh came off his finger. This tragedy would lead to nightmares about her struggles, that she would wake up with self-inflicted scratches. Elvira eventually sought psychiatric therapy. While she was pregnant with Jose Armando, named after Armando Educa's grandfather, she would meet her second husband. Elvira met the renowned OBGYN, Dr. Constantino Tito Manahan, and got married to him that same year. They had two sons, Juan or Johnny, and Constantino Jr. or Bongoy. Elvira was often teased about how their romance started because of how the courtship began with her legs wide open. Amid the social conventions of her time, Elvira was not afraid to be herself. She would literally laugh out loud at a time when this was considered uncouth. She was part of high society, and during her time, these elites looked down on people in show business. And yet, seemingly in Elvira fashion, she still went on to be a part of that world. Showcasing her acting chops, such as in director Ismael Bernal's directorial debut, Pagdating sa Dulo, Charito Solis's Ang Pulube, and Christian Espiritus, Alaga. Elvira was invited by media tycoon Eugenio Lopez Jr. to host the show, Two for the Road, alongside Joey Lordizabal, then later on, Nestor Torre. People would stay up until late in the night to watch her show because of her legendary outfits and accessories. The topics they discussed on the show went from serious to unusual, fitting for the unpredictable host. When news about a scandalous recorded tape of the lovemaking between then-president Ferdinand Marcos and American starlet Dovey Beams became public, Elvira couldn't believe that it was the president, especially when she heard his screams during orgasm. She thought it was Vic Pasilla, the late comedian who used to mimic the president. Then First Lady Imelda Marcos set up a meeting with Elvira and her friend George Season, probably hoping to save face. Imelda shared how there's no privacy in the palace because in every room, there's a guard. She also shared that whenever she and Ferdinand would make love, he would scream. Elvira was finally convinced that it really was the then-president that she heard on tape. Elvira Manahan also rubbed elbows with Bob Hope, Sammy Davis Jr., Marlon Brando, and Pat Boone. Much like those who were around her, these Hollywood celebrities were also drawn to her charm. Elvira's favorite expressions seemed to foreshadow what will happen to her later in life. I need that like a hole in the head and when I die, I'd like to go with a bang were her go-to phrases. In the latter years of her life, a young man 
named Jaime Balatbat, had been calling her. Elvira perceived him to be mentally unstable. He would call her and tell her all about his problems. One thing about Elvira is that she's a sucker for sob stories. She would talk to Jaime on the phone for hours. There were even nasty rumors that he was her lover. At the time, Elvira was already pushing 60, while Jaime was only 27. On October 14, 1986, the news of Elvira's death at the hands of Jaime shocked the public. One morning, Jaime went to the Manahan residence to get his commission from a real estate deal as he was with a real estate agent that negotiated the sale of the Manahan's Forbes Park home. Since it was still early in the morning, the house helper offered him a seat and some refreshments, then told him that Elvira won't be up for a few more hours. The noticeably agitated Jaime shot the house helper, Margarita, then went around the house and shot the other helpers, Sheila and Estrella. The crazed realtor then went upstairs to demand funds from Elvira before killing her. He shot her, then bashed her head in using a dumbbell. Elvira would later on be found slumped on her work table, bleeding. Much like her favorite expression, she was shot in the head. Sheila, the house helper, managed to crawl out of the gate to call a neighbor's maid's attention who notified the village security. Elvira and the rest of the victims were rushed to the Makati Medical Center. Elvira underwent brain surgery but died later on. Jaime's motive for killing Elvira is still unknown. He already had a criminal record due to a near-fatal assault on a U.S. Embassy official. He was put to jail for the deaths of Elvira and her two helpers. He would eventually die in a prison fight two years later. Elvira's case was so prominent that it was brought up to the Supreme Court. Elvira was a legendary socialite who was impossible to miss. Her eclectic style can get anyone's attention. Her sharp wit made her a great conversationalist. And her electrifying personality drew anyone and everyone in. Not to mention her infectious laugh that would radiate from every household's television. Her legacy on television lives on through her son, Johnny Manahan, or better known as Mr. M. He is a film and television director and is well known for managing actors for ABS-CBN's Star Magic and just recently transferred to rival network GMA. Elvira Manahan will always be considered as someone ahead of her time, but gone too soon. Further updates, please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at PH Murder Stories. And subscribe to our YouTube channel, PH Murder Stories. If you have case suggestions, please go to our website at phmurderstories.com and fill out the request form at File Your Blotter. Did you like this episode? Give us a rating on Apple Podcasts, or if you're listening on other platforms, kindly send us a review on our Facebook page or send us a tweet. You can also share our podcast to your Instagram and Facebook stories through Spotify. 
We are also inviting you to join our Facebook group, PH Murder Stories The Verdict, and participate in our discourse about true crime, both local and international. This group is a safe space for true crime and mystery fans like us who want to engage in thorough discussions about the subject. To all our listeners, we hope you could support us on Patreon. If you're fond of online shopping, you can also help our team earn a small commission by clicking our Lazada and Shopee affiliate links found in the description. Any amount you contribute will enormously help support our team to produce more quality content. The views and opinions expressed by the podcast creators, hosts, and guests do not necessarily reflect the official policy and position of Podcast Network Asia, the hosts of the program, or other programs of the network. Any content provided by the people on the podcast are of their own opinion and are not intended to malign any religion, ethnic group, club, organization, company, individual, or anyone or anything.